Um, hello everyone to today's Coded Factory talk. Today we're going to talk about Material UI and I'm joined today by Aziz. Um, Aziz, you want to introduce yourself? Hello everyone. I'll be here to, uh, to ask questions and to uh, uh, just keep Khaled on track. <laughs> yeah. Uh, help me avoid mistakes. <laughs> um, okay, so what is Material UI? Material UI is a UI library that is um, designed using something called material design. And uh, material design um, helps you um, sort of having a sort of um, to have best practices while doing designs in your website. So what is the benefit of material UI? It's time saving. It has good looking components. It's easy to use, and basically you'll have design consistency uh, overall in your project. And the best part about Material UI is they have great documentation. Okay, so first of all, we're going to start by the setup. Um, I have a React app uh, ready. So nothing new over here. So first of all, I'm going to yarn add Material UI. So yarn add material UI slash core. Okay. Um, after adding material UI, um, so just to start with, material UI uses Roboto font uh, as its uh, default font. So if you're going to stick with the default, uh, if you're going to stick with the default font, then I'm suggesting that you would, I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm suggesting that you would uh, put the link for the material UI fo font in your HTML. So I'm just going to copy paste it. And if you're also going to use any of the icons provided by material UI, you should also include the link. So just to start with, I'm just going to include both links and whether we use them or not, we'll see. So the first link says Roboto over here and the second one says material icons. So first of all, we're going to start by, the, by a component and how we can use components in our uh, software or uh, application. So I'm going to create a folder called components. And I'm going to create a new component called button demo. Um, I'm going to use a shortcut to create a component button demo. It's exported by default. And then, sorry. Um, and then I'm going to import the button component from Material UI's uh, library. After that, I'm just going to place the button over here, button. And let's see how it will look like in the app. So I'm just saying, I, uh, I'll just say I'm a button. Then I'll go to app.js. I'm going to remove everything that is already there by default, and I'm going to add the button demo. And I'll save, but since we're not using the logo or the CSS, let's just remove that and save. So if we go to our React app, it will show the button I added if we hover over it or click, let me just zoom in so it would be clear. If I click on it, it's, it has uh, some type of animation, but basically it doesn't really look like a nice button. So if we take a look at the documentation provided by Material UI. Okay. So this is the buttons API. It's telling me uh, that it has different types of props, children, classes, color, component, disabled, 
disabled elevation and all the description needed for each of the props. Um, I'll initially use the variant over here, which says if it's contained, outlined, or text. And I'm going to try using the colors. Um, and those are the options that are provided over here. So let's apply that. Let's go to the button demo. Button demo. And I'm going to add a variant. And initially, I'm going to give it the value contained for the color. I'm going to use the secondary color. Let's see how that would look. I just saved. Let's go back to our button. And uh, secondary is kind of red to pink. And uh, this is the contained. Let's try the other options using the variant and color. So this is outlined and this is text. Let's try primary over here. And there is one more um, prop I would like to use, which is size. And I'm just going to put the size as medium save. Let's take a look. So this is the contained button. This is the outlined and this is the text button. Um, we can't really see the size difference. So I'm just going to try size equals small and size equal large. If I go back this is the small, this is the medium, and this is the large, but since there is a, a slight difference, but we can't really see much with the text button since it's not outlined. Okay, um, so this is how we used the button component. Uh, there is a very uh, interesting component that we are going to use frequently, and I'll tell you why later but the second component is the typography component. So let's try the typography component, typography. And inside the button over here, I'm going to add the typography component. Typography, I'm just making sure that I don't have any typos. I'll wrap the button. Let's take a look at how it changed the app. Nothing much changed over here, but what I can use according to the documentation, I'm going to show you the documentation right now. Okay, so according to the documentation, I have the alignment, the class, classes, color, um, display, so much more, and the variant. So as you can see here that there are H1 variants, H2, H3, and so on. Um, so initially, I'm just going to use those alignments um, over here. So this is a variant, oops, variant. And I'll use an H1, save. If we go back to the demo, it's a really huge button. Uh, for me to demonstrate the alignments, I'm just going to add the rest of the typographies in app.js. So I'll just add another import over here, add a typography component with a variant H4, a color as primary and uh, a line prop as um, right. And let's close the component, have some, some text here and save. Let's see how that's going to reflect. So as you can see, the primary color is kind of purplish and the alignment uh, is right. 
and it's an if we inspect and take a look at this it's an h4 um it's clear uh, i just it's over sure hello is it um so why would you use why would you use the typography component with variants like this instead of just having an h4 and then having some uh, some uh, styling on it like what what uh, is there a benefit to using the typography in this way that's actually a great question one of the benefits is for theming uh, which we're going to get into later on in the demo and the second benefit is that those typography components are responsive um, they may they may be more uh, benefits to that to the typographies but one of the main reason is that those are responsive so basically if i just uh, switch to a responsive version of the website. Um, as you can see, the text got smaller according to the screen size. Uh, does that uh, answer the question? Clear, thank you. Okay. Okay, so basically using components, I'm just going to go back to the documentation and show you different types of components. As you can see on the left, you have the alerts, app bar, avatar, and whenever you go to any of the components, so let's go to the button, the one we used, and I can actually just type button over here. It's going to show me a button. And you can see the different examples of buttons provided by Material UI. And if you want to find out the props of this button, you would have to click on something called the button API at the bottom which is referenced. If you just click on it, then it will show us the page I just showed you. Uh, I just showed you. Um, so as I mentioned, or as when Aziz asked, I mentioned something about theming, which is one of the um, really uh, cool features about, feature about Material UI, which is creating a theme that we can use all over our project. So to create a theme, we'll first have to start by creating a, a theme.js file. You can use any name you would like to use, but basically I'll just use theme. Um, and first of all, we will have to import create material UI theme. And this is imported from core slash, slash, uh, slash styles, which is already installed and then what we'll have to do is define a variable, uh, a constant actually called theme. It does not have to be called theme. Uh, create a material UI uh, theme. And inside this material UI theme, we're going to inject the theme. Okay, uh, some of you may ask, where do I get this theme from? Or where do I know the um, options I can change? In their documentation, I'm going to show you right now. Um, okay, just a second. Okay, theming. Um, if I go to the theming documentation, um, there is a default theme where we can look into default theme. And those are all the keys and values of the default theme. So if we take a look at, for example, the palette and look at the primary color, it will show us this main color, which is kind of purplish. And if we go to the secondary, it's the reddish pink color and so on. Uh, error, warning, and info. So for example, if we would like to customize the palette, we would just come over here, um, put the palette key, and then we can put the primary color. And then we can provide the main color as a hex color. I'm just going to copy it from here, paste and save. So now I um, customized the main primary color. If we take a look at our demo, um, yeah, 
So you will notice that nothing has changed. And the reason is we still didn't inject this theme into our project. So how do we inject our theme into our project? We'll go to app dot, uh, to index.js. We're going to import theme provider from material UI over here. And then we're going to wrap our app with the theme provider. Theme provider. We will send it a theme. And then, but uh, to send it a theme, we're just going to import the theme. Import theme from dot slash theme. Um, this wouldn't work at the moment because I did not export the theme from the theme file. So this is a constant theme. I need to export it. Export default theme. Save. Um, I'll use this theme over here. And now let's take a look. OK, it didn't refresh. I think for some reason it stopped running so let me run it again yarn start so now you'd see that anything i used primary in has changed to this green color because i modified the palette uh, to change this color so let me just modify the secondary color as well um, secondary main and I'm going to get a color from my notes and paste if we go back to our website now the secondary color is orange okay so this is creating a theme for the whole project and usually you'd start by doing that. You would see what your primary colors are, what your secondary colors, and you can also go to the default uh, props of uh, the theme and look at typography where you will find that the font family is Roboto. And as mentioned earlier, this is the default, so you'll have to include it in your project. It's not there by default. You can change the font weights, the H1 sizes, and all that. Um, but I'm not going to get into more customizing. But basically, this is the idea of creating a theme. You can, um, you can look at the breakpoints. And basically, breakpoints are defining the screen sizes. So an X small screen size is from 0 to 600, 600 is small, 960 is medium, 1,280, and anything above X large is 1,920. This is the breakpoint for an X large screen. Um, Wait, so you can, uh, sorry, Khaled, you can, yeah, you sure. can also modify breakpoints? In, uh, yes, in definitely, the definitely. OK, uh, so you break can points create are... like custom, so you can create like custom, uh, custom keys, not just custom sizing? Yes. OK, amazing. Uh, um, you can also, um, like, um, by default, everything is responsive. But while you're building your material UI, uh, by while you're building your project using material UI, you can still customize um, keys that don't even exist in the default. So you can add keys if you would like. Um, basically, it's keeping all those um, uh, keys and values. You can modify them or add new ones if you'd like. Um, so as we said uh, earlier, um, this is like styling CSS. You would actually um, like style the main design. And then you would have obviously customized design for specific components. So to customize design, um, I'm going to talk about something called material uh, styled components. Oh, and we're going to customize using style components. So if I go back to the button demo and I want to create a styled component for my button demo, what I'll have to do first is import styled from material UI. Um, material UI core slash styles. 
and then I would have to define a new component with the new styles. So I'm going to uh, create a new style. I'll call it my button. And then I'm going to use styled. I'm going to style the button component and I'll open an object. Here I can put different types of styling keys, just like CSS. Um, I'll just copy paste some styles from my note. Paste. So um, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, I just need to wrap this and parentheses. Save. So now that um, I created, as you have a question. Just, uh, yes, a quick question. So it looks to me like uh, styled the the function that comes back from from uh, Material UI. It looks like it's it looks like styled components. Maybe some people are used to styled components, but I think the actual uh, syntax is a little bit different. I think it creates a component that you can use like styled components, but it yes. looks like maybe it's not using the regular it CSS does. class names. It's it's using an, an a styling object, which comes from Material UI itself. Yes, um, yeah. it's more okay. like it's more like a function if you want to think about it that way. Okay. Um, right. Okay, so now that I've created my styled component, I would just have to replace the component I want to use the styles on. So, for example, instead of button, I'm going to use my button. And let me just save and take a look at how this would look. So, as you can see over here, uh, the button has a gradient background according to the customized style I, style I provided. Um, and maybe I just should make this kind of smaller, save. So yeah, this is how it looks. But sometimes, like for example, if I want to use the same styling for this button, but I want to change a specific prop that maybe the background color, for example, I just don't want it always to be a gradient. So instead of creating a styled component three times or using the styled function three times, I can send props to um, to this uh, styled component. So how would I do that? I'd go, for example, to the background and instead of this value over here, I'm just going to say props send um, because I'm going to send it. And then if I'm, I'm going to name the prop as custom color, uh, there's a typo, color. I'm going to check if I did send a custom color, then use the custom color. Otherwise, use the linear gradient over here. So, um, okay, sorry, props dot custom color, custom color, yeah. If I take a look, nothing changed over here, but if I go to the button and send custom color, custom color equals, and I'll just say FFF, which is white. If I go back here, it applied the styling because I sent the custom color. So basically this would help us to use a customized styled component multiple times. So if I can just change all my buttons to the styled component, paste, paste, and send um, some custom colors. So here custom color is equal to, let's say, I'll take this color from my notes. Oops, paste. I'll just trap it in an object. And then I'm going to send another custom color over here. And let's take a look. So this is a custom color. This is another custom color. And this is the default 
background color that I have already put in my customized component. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, go through, go over everything I just said. So first of all, you can use the default components with the default coloring scheme palette and the uh, default theme provided by Material UI. If you would like to customize the theme for your project, you would have to create a theme file and then inject this theme file into index.js. Um, or everything customized in that theme file would be applied on the whole project. But if you want specific styled components that you would like to use, um, that are not over the whole project, for example, it's a page in a project or so, or a section in a project, then you might as well just create a styled component and use this styled component in your project. But you will have to use the name of the styled component instead of the default uh, material UI component. So this pretty much wraps uh, everything about material UI, their documentation mentions everything uh, regarding styled, for example, styled components and the syntax you can use. Um, but I'm going to continue with the demo and demonstrate a couple of other frequently used uh, components or I'll just assume that we use them a lot. Um, um, encoded factor. Can I ask a question before we before sure. we move on to the next part? Yes. Sure. Uh, so you had you had one of your one of your styling rules uh, uses the function and receives props. Yes. Um, does this props function is it like with styled components with the regular styled components library? Do you have access to the theme over here? So instead of that linear gradient, could we use props .theme .primary, for example? Um, honestly, I'm not sure. We can try that. Props yeah, dot theme dot primary. Save. Okay. Let's take a look on primary of undefined. Okay. So, so you can I I, th I think that. I think it is possible. Props dot theme. Okay. Um, styled components. And let me just look for theme. Um, oh, I see. So you'd you'd wrap the whole thing in a function. Yes, just... I think so. Okay, okay, I see. I think so, which is pretty interesting, right. actually. Um, yeah. Oh, and this uses those backticks that yeah. uh, that people are used to from from regular styled components. Yes. Okay. So I guess okay. you could use the, the object, passing an object to the function, or you can use the interpolated function with the, with the back ticks as well. I actually okay. think you can do both. Yeah. Um, you can wrap it in this theme, and then maybe you can have a condition inside. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's very easy to find any questions on your mind in their documentation. You would just have to know what you're looking for. So um, the next thing I would like to demonstrate from the frequently used components is the card. And basically, even if we don't name them cards in our projects, but we usually do have them. So let me just create a new file called a card demo.js and I'll create a component. And then I'm going to import the following components um, from material UI, card, card header, card media, card content, typography, but I don't need avatar uh, for what I have in mind. And from their names, they're pretty, uh, it's pretty obvious what they're used for. So the card is the outer container, uh, card header is probably somewhere at the top, media, I can guess it's an image or a video, card content and typography for text. So I'll start by uh, creating my card. Um, I'll, I have a card example ready. So I'm just going to place it over here. 
and let's take a look on what the content of the card is. It has a card header with the title food, subheader, everyone loves food. Uh, my card media, I'm using an image and the image is from, uh, it's an online address uh, URL. It has a title, all types of food. Uh, card content has a typography of a uh, type paragraph and the color secondary. Um, let's take a look if it would render properly. So I'm just going to render it under button demo, card demo, and save. So yeah, um, in my, um, in my uh, card example, I'm using something called my card media and it's not the default card media. And the reason is that I have to define a height for the image. So I'm just going to um, import styled, import styled from, sorry, at material UI core slash styles. And then I'm going to create a constant with my media, with my card media, which is equal to styled of a card media. And then I'm going to send this object over here with a height, height 30 and a padding top um, 56.25 and this is just from their demo uh, and this is because I want the image to be with a ratio of 16 to 9. I have a problem because const is misspelled. Let me save and take a look now at our Okay, I need to remove this back to what it was. Just give me a second. Copy, paste, and let's take a look. So as you can see over here, I'll, I, I just wanna zoom out a little bit, but, but it's not actually zooming out. But as you can see here that the card is huge and I can duplicate the cards and take a look on how it will look like. They're going to be under each other. Um, any questions, Aziz? No, it's clear. I'm just wondering why the card, why the image is so huge if you added a height to it. Um, the height is basically used when we're going to use a grid, which is my next step. But I if I don't define a height, so let's go back and not define a height. Um, actually, while I was doing the demo, it didn't, uh, it wasn't showing, but um, yeah, I think the height is for um, when placing it in a grid, but we'll take a look at that. Um, the height is not even taking place uh, over here. It's not being uh, implemented. If, okay, so the next part is the grid and usually a grid is to manage the layout of a section or a page on your website. So I'm going to create a new file called a grid demo .js and I'm going to import, import grid from at material UI core. I'm going to create a component and I'm going to let me put this down here and I'm going to import the card demo. Import card demo from card demo. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use the um, grid container 
and I'll put a spacing of eight. All that is mentioned in the grid API on their website. So if we go to grid, um, if we go down to the grid API, it mentions their props and the container prop, if true, the component will have the flex container behavior. You should be wrapping items with a container. Um, uh, let's take a look at spacing. Where is spacing? Defines the space between the type item component. It can only be used on the type container component. So container and spacing eight. Now I would want to add um, items inside. So I'm just going to add another grid with the key item. And I'm just going to say that the breakpoint for an X small screen, it should take the 12 columns on a screen. A screen is divided into 12 columns. And inside that, I'm going to add the card demo. Let's take a look on how that would look like. I'm just going to remove the card demo from app.js so it would be clearer. And I'm going to add the grid demo over here. OK, so nothing changed much because I defined it to take the 12 columns on the screen. Um, now I'm just going to try adding different types of grid items with different sizes. So this is going to be six and another one that is six as well. Let me go back. As you can see, it divided it into two uh, cards because six takes half of the screen only. And so on if we put another four. So those three are with the size four. And if we go down, they're 12 divided by four is three cards. How did that space that's between the two that's between the cards that's coming from the spacing, spacing. Container, right? Yes. So if okay. I decrease that to two, you'd see that the card is bigger and there are less spaces between them. And it's smart enough to put the spacing all around the card. So I'm seeing that the yes. spacing, the spacing is applied on top between as the well. rows. Yeah. Okay. But not on the not on the edges, not on like the the far edges. So that's really cool. That's yeah. something I've always struggled with with, with Bootstrap, yeah. trying to add padding or spacing around the card, and then having to figure out if this card is at the end of a row or if it's in the middle of a row. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yes. Um, so now that we created a grid with a, a flex container, um, another frequently used uh, component is the... Um, container component, uh, like the whole page container component. So I'm just going to say container demo.js and I'm going to import container from at material UI core and I'm going to import the grid demo from grid and I'm going to create a component. I'll just move this up and I'm going to create a container with a max width op uh, prop that says X large for now. And we'll see what this does in a bit. We'll just put the grid demo over here and I'm going to remove the grid demo from the app.js and instead add the container, container demo. Well, let me just delete those unused components and save. So if we take a look now, it applied spaces on the edges of the cards 
Um, and I defined the screen to be, the max width of the screen to be X large. So let's try changing that into, for example, medium. And you'll notice that regardless on what the screen size is, it's, it's showing me the cards as a medium screen sized component. Um, you can change those breakpoints for the cards below to, um, for example, um, I, I'm going to show you an example I have. I'm going to change the demo card over here and I'm going to show you the difference right now. Paste. So for these cards over here, I'm saying that if the screen size, if the breakpoint is um, X small, then I'll have two on the screen, two cards on the screen beside each other. But then if the screen size gets uh, bigger, then I want to have three. So if I save that, go back here, it's, um, and obviously I changed the spacing back to eight. So now I have three on the screen, but if I make it smaller, now I have two on the screen. Um, uh, as he's told me not to resize the screen and instead use the responsive version, but I keep forgetting. Um, okay, so, so that's pretty much it. Um, there are infinite possibilities of different types of options that can be used on all the components. Um, I'm not going to cover them all, but as I said, the documentation is perfect. Uh, some interesting um, components is the box. And the box is kind of like uh, a wrapper that you can um, define. Let me just take a look at the um, API. You can define margins, you can define paddings. Um, so you're not really using class names like you used to use in Bootstrap, but the documentation is helpful enough if you're willing to learn something new. So instead uh, of class names, you would be using uh, you'd be using props. Yes, this is component based. You yes. know what this kind of reminds me of? Um, what? It reminds me of being in uh, in a React Native environment. Because in yeah. React Native, you don't have HTML elements, so you're, everything is a component. But this kind of feels uh, this kind of feels yeah, the same. Yeah, actually, actually, that's a very uh, good comparison because people who are used to React Native, the main switch between React and React Native is the fact that you're using components and not uh, elements and applying some styling on them. So. If you use Material UI, then they become kind of similar. I'm actually not sure if Material UI can be used in React Native. Material UI with React Native. That would be really interesting. Mm, yeah, actually there is a library. I'm not sure if it's outdated or not. Yeah, it's the last published two years ago. But if it is working, then it's amazing, honestly. You wouldn't have to worry about building things. When was the last update? I don't know, that looks kind of sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not saying uh, you should use it. I'm just saying and if it is working, then it's a good idea. Um, any questions? No, this has been very, uh, very informative, Khaled. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you guys. I think that's it for today's session. Um, and we'll see you in the next factory talk.